Grid TV viewers, may many of them know Katha Pollitt best for her subject to debate column and her witty feminist essays in The Nation magazine. She's also a poet, though. Her work's been anthologized in the Oxford Book of American Poetry, and she's earned a National Book Critics Circle Award. Today, we'll probably talk about lots of things, but first and foremost, she's going to share some poems from her latest volume, The Mind Body Problem. It's just out from Random House. Katha, we're so glad to have you. Thanks so much for having me on the show. And it's Laura. so fun to have you here talking about poetry, I just have to say. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. let's start with the poem, The Mind Body Problem. Can, are you up for that? Do you just want to dive I'd, in and I'd read the first one? I'd love to read one? it. All I'd right, love go. to read it. Um, Don't forget to look I, up I, at the camera yes. over here. I majored in philosophy, I should tell you, but this is about all I took away from it. The, the, the <laughs> phrase, the mind body problem. And we all have that problem yes, in I'm one right. form or another. So this is my form mind body problem. When I think of my youth, I feel sorry not for myself but for my body. It was so direct and simple, so rational in its desires, wanting to be touched, the way an otter loves water, the way a giraffe wants to amble the edge of the forest, nuzzling the tender leaves at the tops of the trees. It seems unfair somehow that my body had to suffer because I, by which I mean my mind, was saddled with certain unfortunate high-minded romantic notions that made me tyrannize and patronize it like a cruel medieval baron or an ambitious English professor husband ashamed of his wife, her love of sad movies, her budget casseroles and regional vowels. Perhaps my body would have liked to make some of our dates, to come home at four in the morning and answer my scowl with none of your business. Perhaps it would have liked more presents, silks, mascaras. If we had had a more democratic arrangement, we might even have come, despite our different backgrounds, to a grudging respect for each other, like Tony Curtis and Sidney Poitier fleeing handcuffed together, instead of the current curious shift of power in which I find I am being reluctantly dragged along by my body as though by some swift and powerful dog. How eagerly it plunges ahead, not stopping for anything, as though it knows exactly where we are going. <laughs> I love it. Now that line, I myself, by which I mean In my mind, my <laughs> mind is very deep. How we, would things be different if maybe we did think of our body as ourselves instead of the head pit? But it's so uh, Christian not to do that, isn't it? Is it because different in other traditions? I'm sure it must be. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what they are, but I'm sure it can't be the, that way all over the world. But with we're brought up to be Christians, and so your mind is your, where your morals are and your, your, you know, control of your body. It's all about that, Christianity. Now, you've fought against Christianity for a long time, and um, you're one of those who has been fighting the valiant fight to raise some criticisms about marriage, about gay marriage as a goal, about heteros, mandatory kind of... Um, breeding and, and family um, nuclear structure overall, patriarchy. Sh have we just lost that battle? Well, um, that's an interesting question. I don't think so. I think things just change. And, you know, it's a really big country. So you have, um, so now there are a lot of places where you can have a gay marriage. Right. But then you have to have a gay divorce. So, <laughs> so um, I'm actually very much in favor of gay marriage as a civil rights issue. Um, but, you know, once gays can get married, they'll see how complicated it is and all like that. And <laughs> they might I mean, not like it so much. Because <laughs> you have been. I mean, it's just a, a symbolic argument, but it's a symbolic subject. But it's one of those subjects where the feminist critique seems to have just been kind of bulldozed to the side while we have this other discussion about fairness, which is an important discussion when it comes to gay marriage. But what about the critique of the institution? Well, I think that... Um, you can criticize the institution and also be married. That's yeah. why people get divorced. You got um, married. I got married. I'm married now. Well, I couldn't resist because um, to get married in your 50s is the thing that is not supposed to happen. Remember um, all these studies that say, you know, you have less chance of getting married after 30 than of being captured by a terrorist or struck by lightning. Um, so I felt I had to rise to the challenge. <laughs> what keeps you, I mean, this is a sort of hackneyed question, but what keeps you going? I mean, what's the relationship between your political column writing and the poetry? And then we'll have you read more. Well, you know, I usually think of them as coming from a very different place because I save my kind of um, uh, funny outrage, my comic outrage <laughs> for my column 
And then the poems, I think, deal with some of the same questions, but in a, uh, a I hope, a deeper way. Mm -hmm. um, and they're also the main thing about poetry is language. Um, you know, I, I like to say that if, if I turn in my column and it's a little long and they have to cut, within five minutes I've forgotten what those words even are. But with a poem, you remember. Um, it really is the best words in the best order. That's, that's the hope. Um, a column is a little more functional, although you still try to make it as good as you can. Read another poem. Okay. I'd love you to read maybe Playground. Okay, well speaking of the critique of um, uh, contemporary gender relations, uh, <laughs> this is a poem um, about the playground where my daughter sp and I spent a lot of time at West 91st Street in Riverside uh, when she was a toddler. When I first found the playground, I thought, this is heaven, big trees, uh, friendly people, other children, it's so safe, um, it's pretty, it's nearby. After I'd been there for a while, it seemed a little different. <laughs> playground. In the hygienic sand of the new municipal sandbox, children with names from the soaps, Brandon and Samantha, fill and empty, fill and empty, their bright plastic buckets alongside children with names from obscure books of the Bible. We are all mothers here, friendly and polite. We are teaching our children to share. A man could slice his way through us like a pirate, and why not? Didn't we open our bodies recklessly to any star, say, little one, whoever you are, come in? But the men are busy elsewhere. Broad-hipped in fashionable sweatpants, we discuss the day. A tabloid murder, does cold cream work? Those students in China. And as we talk, not one of us isn't thinking, Mama, was it like this? Did I do this to you? But Mama, too, is busy. She is dead or in Florida, or taking up new interests. And the children want apple juice and Cheerios, diapers and naps. We have no one to ask but each other, but we do not ask each other. <laughs>